I'm glad you're honest enough to admit stealing the biscuits, John. Now, why did you steal them? I was hungry. Me and Raymond. Ask her. That's not right. They'd both had a proper cooked meal. Cook? You? You can't even use a tin opener. That's enough. Now, have you ever stolen before? No. No what? No, sir. Mrs. Desmond, the shopkeeper, says she's seen you three or four times. This was her first chance of catching you. She has to say that for the insurance. And this is the second time you've been in front of me. That was a year ago, and I let you off with a warning. Doesn't seem to have done much good, does it? Does it? The boy's father doesn't live at home, sir. Uh, yes, yes, Mrs. Hillary, I've read your report. Um, John McGuire, I'm going to bind you over to be of good behaviour for 12 months. Do you know what that means? If you catch me again, I'll get put in prison. Well, not quite, but near enough. This lady is the welfare officer. You will report to her, do as she tells you, and behave yourself. Oh, and Mrs. Hillary, I suggest you also get in touch with the boy's father. Now, one thing, my lad, and remember it this time. If I see you here again, you'll be in serious trouble. Talk to your mother like that. You find me father, Mrs, and you ask him. Do you know where your husband is, Mrs McGuire? Last I heard he was working in Bradford. Do you have his address? Why should I bother where he lives? The money comes every week. Oh, I think you're interfering again, Jane. You've seen the father? Mm. It took me a week to find him. Paying for your own petrol, as usual. Yes, I've seen him. He's downstairs now. And you're at? Like a bullet, if I'm asked. You don't have to persuade me. George Bryant handled the separation for Maguire's hag of a wife, so he should be handling this. Put me up against Bryant and I'd act for Dracula. I'd also shout for reinforcements. Yeah. Miss Peterson is here. Send her in, please. And you'd better go home. It's seven o'clock. Oh, slavery isn't dead on the old legal plantation. Reinforcements, if I can lay on the persuasion. You made a good start, Simon. Hello, Mrs. Hillary. Still keeping everybody out of trouble? To the best of my ability, when I can talk judges into exercising humanity instead of the law. Nowhere to go. Corner of Balaclava Street. We'll find it. Good night, Jane. There will be a ground frost in most areas tonight. Well, Jane's always a bit chilly with lawyers. Too many of her clients land in the dock with us leaning on them. She'd rather prosecute society. You can't blame her. You can't blame society either. But you don't change it with ten-year-old tweeds and a persecution complex on behalf of the world's underprivileged. You pinch this from your father. Mm. He only gives it to his five-figure clients and the occasional judge. Nothing but the best. Plus a chauffeur-driven car to meet me at the station, plus flowers in my hotel room, plus a handwritten invitation to dinner. There has to be an ulterior motive somewhere in that lot. Not ulterior, interested. In what? My dear Harriet, even officers of the court should know about things like that. One night... Preferably with the moon. I'm full. going to break the speed limit down to that cottage in the shires, charge up the path... Careful of the crazy paving. ...and kick over every pot plant in sight looking for the spare key. <laughs> what if I took you seriously? Mm. I'd be privileged, flattered and lucky. Just tell me when. No wonder they drummed you out of the young conservatives. That was for fiddling the tombola. And evasion. Ah, oh, come on, Simon, what am I being softened up for? What do you want this time? Later. Come on. I remember about the crazy paving.
Good evening. Evening. Uh, Miss Peterson, Mr. McGuire, sorry to have kept you waiting. I thought we were having a long, expensive, professionally romantic dinner. Just a bit of a detour first. to this lot first. I'll, I'll talk to you tomorrow. What was all that about? Could be your next case. Oh, no. Not like this. Oh, I didn't think you'd take it without seeing it. Which is about as unprofessional as you can get. Even for you. Well, if we're going to dinner, let's go. And don't make any more detours, Simon. Too late now. I've told you. My husband's back. Frank Lander's brother saw him down the lab. Well, I don't see what's so urgent about that. That welfare woman's been to see him. Mrs. Maguire, I'm a solicitor. We got a legal separation from your husband all neat and tidy. Frank Lander's brother reckons he wants to take the children off me. Oh. Well, that's a bit different. But it could still have waited till office hours tomorrow. I was worried. Oh, the old world's worried, my dear. That's why they invented aspirin. You take a couple and come and see me tomorrow. Go and get washed, you two. Go on. Can we have some chips, Dad? We'll see. You! Out! Hit him if you like, Dave. See where that gets you. He's a solicitor. Is he now? That does make a change from your usual pickups, doesn't it? In the guest of honour's chair and all. If they bother to sit down before they go upstairs. I can do what I like. It's none of your business. Mr. Maguire, you are trespassing. Oh, and contempt of a court order, at least. I'd be careful if I were you. We'd better find out what's happening. We? I'm not getting involved in this. Simon, be your age. You're a lawyer. Even if Maguire is your client, you can't go barging it on a domestic squabble. Remember who you are and what you're supposed to do unless you want the Law Society to remind you. They're deplored. It's eight o'clock at night. Courts adjourned. That was a very angry man, desperate about his kids, likely to get himself into some trouble. Why don't you put away your wig and the code of conduct and start behaving like a citizen, a human being? What you really need is a nurse. Well, I've told that welfare woman it's none of her business either. She can't tell me what to do and what not to do. Oh, now everybody's legally represented. Don't jump to conclusions. Well, who the hell are they? I don't want them in here. It wasn't my idea. I don't want them in here. You've got no option, not while I'm paying the oh, rent. It would all be a lot quieter if I could make some introductions. The erudite Miss Peterson, distinguished counsel. Good evening to you. And my young solicitor friend, Mr. Cooper, with his shiny new certificate to practice and his little hatchet. I think we'd better have a word in the car, Mr. McGuire. When I've finished. Well, that was a bit of a lick and a promise, wasn't it, lad? Eh? Go on, get upstairs. Will you fancy some chips? Yes, a bit later. Come on, John, I said get upstairs. We sleep down here now, Dad. In the wash house. So if anybody comes, your mum can melt the door. We have to get to lad down the drain as well. I've taught Raymond how to use it. He don't wet himself anymore. Look, Dad. Look. Where'd you get that? 
Come on, John, where do you get it? I was at the station off this chap. He wanted me to go down siding with him. So I says, yeah. And Nick, this one, we had to get two platform tickets. They're stupid, some of them, they think you don't know. Go on, get upstairs. I mean, you two lads can sleep in your mum's bed tonight. Go on, uh, and leave that lot. You can sleep in the wash house if you want, and I'll bolt the door. You'll not tell me what to do, not in this house. Oh, yes, I will. You leave those kids where they are. If you move them just once, I'll come back and I'll get hold of you. And if I do, they'll turn the lights out in every boozer you go into, so they don't have to A look. A piece of friendly advice, Mr. Maguire. Keep your hands to yourself. Leave the violence for the lawyers. You're like some big, soft woman dishing out your advice. I'd clout you and her, I'd do time for it, and come back and still make a living, which is a damn sight more than you could do. There's a lot easier way of doing all this, Mr. Maguire. Leave it to me and Miss Peterson. Now, wait a minute. All right, all right. Who's the gaffer on this job? Look, Mrs. I want those kids with me, where I can look after them. I'm going for some chips. Come on, Harriet, all this silence is giving me indigestion. I'm still too astonished. I can understand impulse, I can understand nobility. But you do realize that after that charming little scene, Bryant could call me as a witness and then I can't act for anyone. He won't, he's too shrewd. It would damage his client more than ours. There's still too much involvement. You know, Harriet, I've just realized why most barristers have splendid chests. Stick to the subject. I am doing. It's from all that rarefied air they have to breathe in chambers, chanting 200 times a day over and over again, don't get involved. Look, Harriet, there's a very simple issue here. It's whether or not two kids grow up as juvenile delinquents. I blame Jane Hillary. She always brings you out in a rash of social conscience. I'd rather treat it as a simple application for custody. That's better, you nearly smiled. And you are going to take the case. <laughs> My life's ambition. A custody case on legal aid, it'll just about fill the small change compartment of the petty cash box. Well, there'll be other jobs. Lucrative carrots tomorrow. I take that as an insult and I have to put up with it. The air may be rarefied in chambers, but the view from the bank balance is realistic enough. Humor solicitors don't prod the ox that grinds the corn. They all have their little foibles. There's one in Barnsley who's kinky for rape. Another hates embezzlers, prays every night for the sanctity of property. You know, it's the first time I've ever, ever heard you sound even a little bit bitchy. Not bitchy at all, Simon. Just trying to give you my version of the facts of life. Yes, I'll take the case. But before it's over, I want to know your real reason for dragging me into it. There is another reason, isn't there? those children in court. I disagree. It'd be the worst possible thing for them. We'll need them. I know all about their feelings, but they're pretty tough little kids. Sorry. It'd upset them too much. I have a say in their welfare. I don't want them to appear in court. If they don't, they're liable to stay in your charge for a very long time. I'm with Mrs. Hillary. You can't be. I'd leave them right out. Find a play school or whatever. That can be arranged. Oh, yes, Oakshot. Give them a day in the country, 15 miles away. Of course, it may not be up to us, Mrs. Hillary. The magistrates might ask for the children to be present. I'm certainly not going to volunteer it. I thought you wanted those kids in court. I do. But if the children are asked for, I don't want them there until the last minute, when the evidence has had time to sink in. And the earrings tomorrow, when I want you in front of the magistrates looking just like that. Unlikely. Don't get your hair done. Don't bother about making yourself look smart. I want them to see you as you really are, a diligent, hard-working wife and mother. 
Thank you very much. You won't get much out of this, you know. You don't even have to fill in the forms. Uh, that's all part of my job, Mrs. McGuire. Why are you taking so much trouble? Well, of course, that's how I make a living. I'm an expert in matrimonial cases. I've even written a book on it. Not very exciting. Well, it depends. Managers are always breaking down. Well, somebody's got to pick up the pieces. Might as well be an expert. I reckon you never lose. No, not if I can help it. Call it a hobby. But in this one small area of this one small subject, I'm the expert. And I eat barristers. So you do. As I say. Yes, all right. I've got a record. Three months for tapping one of her friends. I told you about that, Harriet. Yes, I remember. But it would help, Mr. McGuire, if you could simulate some faint degree of repentance. If you say so. I do say so. Rule number one in any custody case is that the facts have to be very convincing before anyone will take young children away from their mother. Now, at present, you're unemployed. Well, I can soon find a job. I can still earn good money. But you've no settled address and you've no one to take care of the children. I'll find the money for that. You don't look after young children with money alone. They need care and attention. The sort they're getting now. No. I've seen that, but the court hasn't. I have to take what you've told me and put it together to make a case. The magistrates need a clear picture in their heads of the sort of man qualified to take care of young children. Well, I'm their father. I mean, that should be enough. Biologically, it is. Legally, it isn't. We'll see you in court tomorrow. What sort of a chance do I stand, Mrs? Will I get the kids? That's one question no lawyer is supposed to answer. Unless he bends the protocol. I don't think you need worry, Mr. McGuire. What's the harm in telling him we have got a good case? Yes, but the less noise you make about it, the less chance you stand of breaking his heart. Not this time. All any magistrate's got to do is take one look at that trollop of a wife. <laughs> we are playing God this morning, aren't we? Instant, infallible judgment. It's true. Is it? I've seen quite a few like Mrs. McGuire. Lazy, not very bright. The front of her legs toasted red from sitting over the fire. She's feckless, but not vicious. She lives in a dream world. She's read all about it in the magazines. True life romance in a haze of port and lemon. Nobody's ever taught her to be a wife, a mother, even a woman. <laughs> if they had, I don't suppose she'd have listened. She should never have married. She should never have had children. <laughs> and there I go with instant judgment. But she's had the children. And she's not a real trollop. Just soft and lazy. What the magistrates will see is that hard man we've just had in here and a sloppy, bewildered woman with two kids. A woman who can't cook and who gets too grateful when someone puts his hand on her knee in the pub. Well, I suppose women like that do exist. I think that for once you're being a little over charitable that you should know. <laughs> I know, all right. And not only women. When it happens to a man, the dream world just gets a bit more expensive. Well, how do you know that? I married one. See you in court. <clears throat> I don't like custody cases. None of us do, but you've got to bring children up properly. I've had one of the kids up in front of me. Hard little nut, but not a bad lad. Well, that's what you say about all your junior hooligans. We do this magistrate's job for nothing. You think the least they could do is give us some decent tea? You should try staff room brew sometime. Then you'd be grateful for what you're getting. Well, I suppose we'd better go in. We don't want to hang about too long. I've got a Masonic do tonight. This is an application under the Guardianship of Infants Act, 1925, by David Maguire against Sandra Rose Maguire for the custody of their two children, John and Raymond Maguire. Miss Harriet Peterson of Council appears for the applicant, Mr. George Bryant for the wife. Good morning, Miss Peterson, Mr. Bryant. You may proceed. 
Your worships, the custody of two young children when it is disputed is never an easy matter to resolve. Yet on a successful resolution depends the future of two members of our society, and to a degree sets out the sort of contribution they will make to it. There are no arcane or complex points of law. There is merely the evaluation by your worships as to the suitability of guardians, whether they be parents or not. My friend is an acknowledged expert in matrimonial law, but I hope in this case a vast knowledge of the law will not be necessary. Its outcome will depend on the true characters of my client, the applicant, and his estranged wife. I will therefore be brief as to background and allow your worships to judge the characters of the two people concerned in this case by their own testimony and demeanor. My client, Mr. Maguire, separated from his wife three years ago. His reasons for that separation were that she was incapable of making a proper home for him and that their frequent quarrels were affecting the children. He has been punctilious without any legal duress in supporting his wife and children. The sum of £12 a week provided by him may well be more than a court would have ordered. Over the past two years, however, he has been disturbed to learn that his elder son has appeared before the juvenile court and shocked to learn of the domestic conditions in which his children are being brought up. I should like to call Mrs Jane Hillary, the welfare officer, to give evidence as to these conditions. I should, however, be grateful if you'd hear her evidence first. She is expecting to be called to another court. Mrs Jane Hillary. <clears throat> I swear by Almighty God that the evidence I shall give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Mrs. Hillary, how long have you known the Maguire children? Just over two years. In what connection? As welfare officer. And on what occasions? And the first was truancy on the part of both children. This has not yet been remedied. And what is their school attendance record? Very bad indeed. Two days a week at most. Any other occasions? I was called in by the medical officer. Both boys had been sent to the clinic and were not attending regularly. Why were they sent to the clinic, Mrs. Hillary? For scabies and dirt sores. Scabies being a common symptom of malnutrition? Or a badly balanced diet, yes. And lack of cleanliness. Any other occasions? Yes. The older boy, John, ran away for two days, and I was called to the police station where he was taken when they found him. He had a gash on his face which needed four stitches. Did he give you any reason for this injury? At first he said he'd fallen down. But the wound was compatible with a backhanded blow of some force delivered by a man wearing a signet ring, or so the police surgeon said. Oh, your worships, that's a real piece of hearsay. You should know better, Mrs. Hillary. But John later admitted he'd been struck by a friend, as he described it, of his mother's. Have you had any other contact with the Maguire children? Yes. I was called in when Mrs. Maguire was accused of running a disorderly house. I had to arrange for the children to be looked after. Mrs. Hillary, in your opinion, is the mother of these two boys a suitable person? Oh, really, your worships, I defer both to Miss Peterson's feminine charms and her status in the higher echelons of our legal pyramid, but really, you know, it's... And Miss Peterson, that was improper. I beg your worships' pardon. Thank you, Mrs. Hillary. Mr. Bryant, do you wish to cross-examine? Oh, very much so, your worship, uh, if I may. First, Mrs. Hillary, I would like to pay tribute to the unselfish interest that you've taken in these children, and I won't detain you very long. Now, just for the record, can you remember what happened to the charges against Mrs. Maguire for running a disorderly house? I believe they were dropped. Yes, they were, weren't they? No evidence. Now, Mrs. Hillary, you looked after the boys for a time. What happened? They were at a residential play school for five days. And then they ran away. Quite a habit with those two, isn't it? <laughs> Where do they run to? They went back to their mother. Hmm. Hmm. Do you know Mrs. Maguire well? Not really. Why is that? She won't speak to me. Just keep saying it's none of my business. Did Mrs. Maguire ever threaten you with violence? Yes. Do you remember the exact words? Hmm? Yes. Well, tell the court then. 
she said she loved her children, and if I tried to take them away, she'd kill me. Now, does that sound like a fairly maternal instinct to you? Allow Mrs. the bench to form their own opinion, if you please. Thank you, Miss Peterson. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Your Worships. Learned counsel is so much more use to the cut and thrust of cross examination than a provincial solicitor like myself. <coughs> <coughs> <clears throat> now, Mr. Sillery, you suffered a great personal tragedy some years ago when your husband and two young sons were drowned in a boating accident. May I ask you directly if this has any bearing on an emotional involvement with the case of the Maguire children? I mean, your own sons would have been about the same age now, wouldn't they? Your Worship, this is the worst form of parlatrix psychoanalysis. If my friend wishes to join the Vienna School, I suggest he qualifies first, but not here. Not when the welfare of two young children is at stake. Miss Peterson will now buzz among us with her collecting books for Oxfam. You were saying, Mr. Bryant? Admiration for learned counsel's eloquence, uh, your worships. Now, Mrs. Hillary, one final point. The boy's father was out of work till yesterday. Could you tell us who secured Mr. Maguire's present employment? I did. Thank you very much, Mrs. Hillary. May I once again pay tribute to your devotion to duty, and if ever I become a welfare case, I can only open trust that you'll be in charge of it. Not if I can help it. I call Mr. David Maguire. And finally, Mr. Maguire, why are you making this application for custody? Because the children aren't being looked after properly. Roaming the streets at all hours, seeing things they've no business in seeing, and the eldest turning thief. You realise the responsibility the curbs on your own freedom entailed in looking after two young children? Yes. And that life would be much easier for you as a man if you left the children where they are? Yes. Yet you are still prepared to take this responsibility? But it's mine. It belongs to me. They're my children. I, I don't care about the rest. Thank you, Mr Maguire. Mr Brown? Uh, <clears throat> Mr Maguire, you're still fixer by trade. I was. Earned about fifty pounds a week. In a good way. Less tax sent your wife twelve pounds. I left you nicely off. A good job, wouldn't you say? The money was good. What do you earn now? At twenty pounds a week. Uh, when I start. Oh yes, the job that Mrs. Hillary got for you in her cousin's warehouse, and you left your last job so you could come here and make a home for your children. That's it. Where are you living now? In a hostel. Do you have anywhere for the children to live? No, not yet, uh, but I will, uh, because uh, Mrs. Hiller is helping me. Oh, yes, of course she would, wouldn't she? I mean, that's like her, isn't it? But nowhere at the moment. No. This last job of yours, the one with the good money, any other reason for leaving it? I mean, was the contract finished? No. Oh, I suppose you got a bit tired travelling up and down the country, is that right? A bit. But not why you left? No. Well, now, still fixing's an hard job. Uh, how old are you, Mr. Maguire? Forty-three. And I suppose they thought you'd better look for something a bit lighter. Well, there was cutting down on the and gang. The two well. oldest were laid off. Yes. So you decided to come back here, or settle down, and look after your children. Yeah, that's it. When did you first talk to Mrs. Hillary? Uh, about the children, I mean. Eighteen months ago. Why didn't you come back then? Well, hmm? Never mind. Have you seen much of your children since they were born? Uh, with your sort of job, I mean. Not as much as I should have done. Otherwise, they wouldn't be like they are. Now, that's why I want them back. Can you cook, Mr. Maguire, or housekeep? I mean, have you looked after yourself? You've been in, in, in lodgings. You know the answer to that. Lodgings. And there wouldn't be enough for a housekeeper on twenty pounds a week. All right. I think that's all, Mr. McGuire. Oh, no, there's just one other thing. Have you ever been in trouble with the police? Yes. Assault, wasn't it? Yes. A friend of your wife's. Almost a lodger, you might say. Neighbours call it a bit more than that. Oh, we all know what neighbours are, though, don't we? Anyway, we went to hospital, didn't we, for five weeks, and you went to prison? Yes. Five weeks in hospital's a long time. You must have quite a temper. All right, Mr. McGuire, I think that's all. Why did you assault this man? 
four stitches in my son's face. Would you do it again? Yes. I'd be stupid to say otherwise, wouldn't I? Would you briefly describe the conditions in the premises where your children are now living, as seen on your last visit? Sink full of pots. Nothing in the larder except a bit of bacon rind for frying and a lump of cheese with mould on it. Bed clothes going grey and stinking of beer. Empty bottles all over the backyard and the lavatory clogged up. Sink and gas stove as black as you're at and stuff belonging to half a dozen chaps just left where they dropped it. Where were your children sleeping? In the wash house on the old boiler slats. Thank you, Mr. Maguire. That is my case, sir. Mr. Bryant? Uh, I call Mrs. Sandra Rose Maguire. I swear by Almighty God that the evidence I shall give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Now, I've only got two or three questions, Mrs. McGuire. Nothing to worry about. Uh, the children are both boys, aren't they? Yes. Have you ever found them difficult to control? Sometimes. Especially now our John's at the big lads' school. Mm. And, of course, you brought them up mostly on your own, I mean, without a man. That's been the trouble. Do you ever worry about the boys? All the time. Has this ever affected your health? That's what the doctor said. But you still want to keep your children? Oh, yes. Thank you, Mrs. McGuire. <clears throat> what sort of life did you lead with your husband before you obtained a separation order? You've already told them that. We was always having rows. Oh, what about? He said I didn't cook, didn't keep the place clean. I know I did, though. It was just that he was too particular. Was your husband ever violent? All the time. Do you remember the first time he struck you? Oh, yes. What time of day was it? Ten o'clock in the morning. In the street, in front of everybody. Did he give you a reason? Because I hadn't been home all night. I missed the bus and stayed with my sister. On the outing from the Crown and Flag. Uh, that's a public house, Mrs. McGuire? Yes, it is, and a respectable one, too. Well, a woman's got to have some company. Are there any public houses you don't go into? What do you mean? Any special ones? Is this relevant, Miss Peterson? I think so, Your Worships. Very well. Please answer, Mrs. McGuire. They won't let me in the beacon or the weavers. Was any reason given for this? Oh, yes. They said I was picking up chaps. But they would, wouldn't they? When they run the sort of pub where a woman can't sit in peace without somebody thinking he can have what he likes for a couple of drinks. How much money do you receive each week? You've told them that. He sends £12, and then there's family allowances, and... And when the boys want new clothes, I, I go out and do a bit of cleaning. Oh, that's interesting. Would you tell us where? Well, I... Uh, I haven't done it for a bit. I see. Do you have a colour television? Yes, I do. Would you tell us where you got it? Uh, Your Worships, to save time, I'm quite prepared to draw up a full summary of Mrs McGuire's household expenses. I would be glad if you would explain, Miss Peterson. Your Worship's on £12 a week with three mouths to feed and rent to pay. It does seem to me the price of a colour television would be hard to come by. I paid for it on instalments. Could we see the card? I've lost it. You are on oath, Mrs Maguire. It was bought for me by a friend. I let him use the boys' room when he was staying round here. Is that what you want to know? There were some people dirty-minded enough to think anything. Mrs. McGuire, you will restrict yourself to answering the questions. And may I remind you that your conduct in this court will have a great deal of bearing on whether or not you're allowed to keep your children. Mr. Bryant? Well, uh, I can't pretend to my friend's eminence as an advocate, Your Worship. Uh, it's difficult to know what to ask. Uh, but I'll do my best. Mrs. McGuire, do you love your children? Oh, yes. Do you look after them? As best I can. It's not my fault sometimes if they don't eat what you give them and they want ice cream and chips and things. Mrs. McGuire, how long have these children been in your custody, care and control? All their lives. 
Thank you, Mrs. McGuire. <laughs> Mr. Bryant? I don't propose to call other witnesses, Your Worships. Everybody knows that young children belong with the mother. That's one of the first principles of custody. Oh, there are exceptions, but you've seen the mother in this case, and I'm prepared to rely on the impression she's made. Oh, it's all too easy to be dazzled by the speeches and the arguments until you can't see the legal wood for the trees. But I've always thought the parents can look after themselves. It's the children that I worry about. And I think it's up to us. And I know this may sound fanciful to your worships. To act as their parents for a bit. I would like you to see John and Raymond. The, the Maguire children. And they are at present at a physical recreation centre at Oakshot. Well, this court will be glad to know whose idea that was. It was agreed by Mrs Maguire on advice from the welfare officer as to the extent to which their presence at this hearing would affect the children. Mm. Not much we can do about it. If you've got this dinner on tonight, you won't mind an early finish. No, so having it too much their own way yeah. for my liking. Arthur's right. We should see the children tomorrow in private. And I think the decision not to bring them here today was a wise one. Oh, very well. And at least I'll miss the traffic. We will see the children in private tomorrow morning. Council will be present. I don't see what good all this hanging about's going to do. I always mistrust quick decisions. Magistrates need time for the facts to sink in. You've been mistreated for 80,000 miles. Where are we going on first? So you can get dolled up. I'm not having you in court looking like a ragman's trumpeter. We haven't got any best clothes. Well, you have now. Mrs. Hillary said she'd fetch us tomorrow. Well, your mother sent me to fetch you tonight. I must say, you both look very smart. I like it at Oakshot. Where's that? Where you were yesterday, in the country. My mum says we want to talk to you. Why should she do that? You always talked to me before. She said my dad said so. Ah, oh, these are the two big lads then? Yes. I do. Come along then. See you later then. Remember me? Yeah, you said you didn't want to see me again, so I got to prison. Oh, that was something else. This is different. We are trying to find out where you want to live. Not with that woman. I think he means Mrs. Hillary. Oh, no, John. Your father wants you to go and live with him. That's what we want. Is that right, Raymond? Yeah, that's what he wants. Well, why doesn't he say so? He doesn't have to. I've said it. Why do you want to go and live with your father? It'll be better. How? Well, he lets us stay and watch football and buys us chips. But surely your mother does that. Sometimes. Was well, not the pub with some chap. Don't you like living with your mother? No, she's dirty. Well, you can't mean that. How do you know? You were a teacher. I was, once. Yeah, you look like a teacher. My dad came to school once, going to sort one of them out. Teacher ran off, knew it was good for him. Why doesn't your brother say anything? I look after him. I see he gets washed and gets his food. 
Only my arms chap sit in. Has your father ever hit him? Oh, I like I do when he's playing up. Anyway, what's it got to do with you? I don't want any of you lot. I want my dad. I don't care if you sent me to prison. I still want my dad. Oh. oh, I think you'd better call Mrs I Hillary. I don't want that silly old cow either. I want my dad. I want my dad. <laughs> Close my case, Your Worships. And I rest and rely on common humanity. May I ask Your Worships for the courtesy of right of reply? No, it's up to you. Yes or no? Oh, I would object to that, Your Worships. Council's right of reply must concern matters of law only. Uh, Miss Peterson and I have taken the same approach in this case, and it would seem to me, in Miss Peterson's own words, there are no complex or arcane issues of law involved. I agree with Brian. And I don't want to take too long. I'm meeting my mother off the four o'clock train. Yes. No point in complicating the issue. No, no Miss Peterson, Mr. Bryant's objection is upheld. The bench will retire to consider its findings. don't like the look of this. Don't worry, Mr. Maguire. They're just not used to slapping Bryant down. They've got to work out how to do it. Roll on the end of the adjournment, then I can gloat. You really are taking this personally, aren't you? Six of one and half a dozen of the other. The woman's not up to much, but nor is he. Comes back when it suits him, thinks he can get it all his own way. I say, leave him with her. I disagree. I wouldn't want any children of mine if I had any, living with a woman like that. Bryant must have known what she was like. He must have known that Miss Peterson would make the most of it. He was prepared to risk it. He knows his job. She can't be so bad. That's just what I mean. And Miss Peterson has a lot of experience in bringing out the worst in people. And the best. I'm for leaving things as they are. I'm not sure. Nor am I. Luke. We've done all we can. We've seen the people. We're none of us lawyers. Let's leave things as they are. But what about the children? Well, what about them? They put up with it for three years. Another couple of months won't hurt. And Harriet Peterson's bound to appeal. Now, as I said, it's six of one and half a dozen of the other. We've done all we can. Let the father appeal and let the judge decide. Oh, that seems the sensible thing to do, but... I can't help feeling it's not facing up to our responsibility. It's the only thing to do. We're not qualified. We've taken it as far as we can. And Miss Stricker has a train to meet. Well, we'd better go back. Your mother's still troubled by arthritis, Miss Stricker? Uh, that's one of the reasons why I want to have a porter and a taxi ready. Well, I'll drive you down if you like. Well, we shouldn't be long now. The finding of this court has been reached after long and deep deliberation. The application is refused. In the interests of all parties, we consider it safer for the children to remain in the custody of their mother, Mrs. Sandra Rose Maguire. If you take my advice, you'll appeal immediately. This court is adjourned. But what about this appeal, Mrs? What sort of a chance do we stand? I mean, will we win? I told you we've got to win. That's what you said before. I'd rather listen to her. I told you we've got to win. God, it makes you sick. One ex-draper, a spinster headmistress, and a bloody retired dental surgeon. We had about the best case I ever heard. That was the trouble. They got frightened. Leave things as they are. Leave it to a judge on appeal. What do you reckon, Mrs? I don't know. It depends on the judge and what he thinks of magistrates. How uh, much will it cost? You better talk to Mr. Cooper about that. He'll be in touch with you. Well, thanks anyway. I think you did well. Thank you. Well, I enjoyed that. All nice and nimble. Sort of argument I like to get into. It's been a pleasure working against you, Miss Peterson. Thank you. You'll lose the appeal. Oh, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Don't be so bloody smug. You'll lose one day. Never against you, boy. You're not good enough. And not on my own patch. And especially not on my own subject. She came the nearest anybody's ever done. 
but not you. Never. I don't think I'm very interested in personal quarrels. No? Well, how did he get dragged into this one, eh? Ask the lad. He's lost ten cases in a row against me. He thinks I'm not a proper solicitor. He thinks it's small stuff, separation, maintenance, custody. I don't. I think it's the most important subject there is. And if you've got to bend the rules to win, you bend them. So do a few criminal lawyers. That's the point. When they bend the rules, the word goes out. Rubber gloves, villains' uncles. Nobody notices the coaching that you do. Dolling up scruffy kids, teaching sluts how to cross their legs. <laughs> I hope you're listening, Miss Peterson. I don't think I'd want anyone as prejudiced as that giving me instructions. Good luck with the appeal. My lord, the magistrate's reasons for reaching their decision in Maguire versus Maguire are before you. The magistrates say that given the choice between two unsatisfactory parents, they consider it safer to maintain the status quo. Yet before the magistrates, the mother was shown to be promiscuous and slatternly, quite unsuitable by any standards to have young children in her care. The father was shown to be a man whose willingness and ability to look after his children, despite some economic deprivation on his part, could not be in doubt. I am aware, my lord, of the seriousness in taking young children away from their natural mother, but this classical consideration had too strong a bearing on the decision made by the magistrates. Their words, you will remember, my lord, were, we consider it safer to maintain the status quo. No one could doubt the integrity of the magistrates responsible for this decision. One can only admire their long-standing public spirit. What I call in question is a certain inexperience, a certain readiness to abdicate their own proper responsibility. They have relied upon the fact that this appeal will result in an assessment of the Maguire case by your lordship, a trained legal mind. I'm therefore asking your lordship to reverse the decision made on the evidence presented by assessing it in its true light. Miss Peterson, I have listened with astonishment to what can only be termed slander of the one of the most respected common law foundations of our legal system, the Magistrates Court. I do not need you to remind me, Miss Peterson, that these members of the judiciary lack legal training. I am aware of this. I am also aware, as you seem to have forgotten, that these members of the judiciary bring to their onerous and unpaid tasks a sense of responsibility and public service which some members of the legal profession would do well to emulate. I will not accept from you that this bench of magistrates has been deficient in its duty. Unlike myself, they have had the opportunity to observe at first hand the demeanor of the parties in this case. Nothing has been said which prompts me to find that they were wrong in principle. I believe that when they used the word safer, it was a calculated opinion based on regard for the welfare of the children. I have sufficient trust in their judgment to accept their findings. I would like here to add a cautionary note, Miss Peterson. I hope you do not repeat this fashionable form of outburst. This appeal is dismissed. Bad luck, Miss Peterson. It wasn't luck. That was anything but luck. That was a judge who thinks magistrates are infallible. Hasn't met any for 20 years. <laughs> I think I'd better buy you a drink. You know, don't get too involved, Miss Peterson. That was Cooper's trouble. It never does, you know. Somebody always loses. <laughs> two at home. We were hungry, as usual. He's a funny little lad. Real dry. Did you miss your man then, me angel, did you? I miss me tea. <laughs> That's me lamb. Here's some money for the chips. You like chips, don't you, love? It's only a case of having to. <laughs> don't you two be me at home? <laughs> Come 
Come on, Raymond. Let's get up before the pub shop. We'll have to queue. <laughs>